So the CEO of a major drug company recently said that in the future, there's going to be no more drugs for blockbuster diseases. There's only going to be drugs for blockbuster mechanisms. Now, what did he mean by that? And why did he say that? And, and Danny Hill has hinted at it when he talked about the water leak. And the reason he said there's going to be no more drugs for blockbuster diseases is because diseases don't actually exist. Well, they don't exactly exist in the way we think of them. You know, just like we think the world is flat when we look out there, we think diseases are real because they seem to appear, but they're actually downstream effects or symptoms from some upstream mechanism. Now, many people say, what kind of doctor are you? What do you do? I say, I practice functional medicine. They go, what's that? I say, well, it's the opposite of dysfunctional medicine. <laughs> and I'm sure some of you probably have experienced that. Functional medicine is a map. It's a GPS system. It's actually a way of navigating through the landscape of illness through mechanisms, not diseases, through patterns that Jay was talking about, through understanding the connections and the patterns that are present in our whole system. It's actually personalized medicine. It's systems medicine. It's the medicine of connectivity. It's the medicine that connects the dots between all the things that are going wrong in our biology. It's the medicine of why. We're very good at naming diseases at the what in medicine, but we're not very good at asking why. Why does this disease occur? What is the underlying cause? In functional medicine, we're not super specialists. We're super generalists. We understand how everything connects together. It's a very different model. We have to understand the system, not the symptom. In fact, how do we do this in functional medicine? Well, we do it through extensive histories and questionnaires that analyze the data of a person's story. We do it through extensive laboratory testing and functional biomarkers and genomics that give us the clinical decision-making tools we need to navigate the landscape of illness by looking at mechanisms and not diseases. And it's an enormous paradigm shift. I mean, to say that diseases don't exist, to say that we, the way we think about things isn't exactly the way we thought, to say that the Earth is no longer the center of the universe, that, the, that um, we don't have fixed species, that they evolve. I mean, these are major paradigm shifts. That's where we are in medicine today. And it's, it's a paradigm shift that's actually not something that's going to happen in the future. It's actually happening right now. What I've heard in this conference from Danny Hillis and Anna Barker and many others is that we have to look at the whole system, that there's some point in the future when we'll be able to diagnose people based on the dynamic interactions that are giving play to give rise to the symptoms or the diseases that we see clinically. But we don't have to wait for the future. The future is here. And it's a model. It's a practical application. It's comprehensive. And it applies the latest systems biology in a method that can be taught and it's scalable, it's doable. And it's called functional medicine. Now, I know about this because I was sick. I was chronically sick. This is me 15 years ago. And I know many of you out there probably have some complaints or chronic illnesses and maybe somebody in your family does or someone close to you who you love. This is about your story. It's about my story. 15 years ago, I was very healthy, actually. I worked as a family doctor in Idaho. I did hundreds of deliveries. I ran the ER. I stayed up many nights. And then I went to China and lived there for a year and worked very hard. And I was breathing the coal-soaked air, which was full of mercury for a year. And then I went to work in an inner city ER for a couple of years. And then suddenly, from one day to the next, I couldn't function. My whole system broke down. And everything I learned in medical school didn't help me figure it out. Now, of course, you can see I feel better. So I figured out a new way to navigate, a new way to think, a new way to go through the process of understanding what goes wrong in a body and how to fix it. And you know, I had all sorts of problems. I, I, I couldn't digest my food. I had irritable bowel syndrome. I had rashes. I had sores on my tongue. I, I, I couldn't sleep. I had no sex drive. I couldn't think. I couldn't remember things. I couldn't focus. It was like I had ADD, dementia, and depression all at the same time. And I did what most of you would do. I went to the doctor. I went to the neurologist at Columbia. I went to the 
rheumatologist at Harvard. I went to the gastroenterologist. I went to the psychiatrist. And I got not a lot of answers, but I got a lot of prescriptions. I got Prozac for depression. I got Valium. I got Ritalin to focus and Provigil because that didn't work. And I got Ambien to sleep and Advil. And I even got Viagra. Now, I realized that I didn't have a drug deficiency, right? I mean, is depression really a Prozac deficiency? Is low sex drive a Viagra deficiency? Is ADD a Ritalin deficiency? Or for that matter, is high cholesterol a Lipitor deficiency? These are not drug deficiencies. These are imbalances in the basic biological systems in the network of our biology. Disturbances in the patterns that give rise to what we call disease. And I realized there was another way, and I, I figured out with the help of some people I met at the time, Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who's a student of Linus Pauling, and people at the Institute for Functional Medicine, how to think differently. And I created, with them, we created over the years a map, a new way of assessing and diagnosing patients based on mechanisms and causes, not just symptoms. And to put together a clinical map to collect data and analyze the data in a reproducible way to create outcomes that are quite extraordinary. I happen to be one of those outcomes, and we did it by looking at the individual. We've talked about personalized medicine. This is about personalized medicine in the clinic. I looked at my own genome. I looked at my own life. I looked at the effect of my environment and my stresses and the toxins that I was exposed to, and how those disturbances led to imbalances in the basic network of my biological systems. And those imbalances are what led to the signs and symptoms we call disease. But most of us as doctors, we just hang out in that outer rim. We don't think about the underlying causes. We just want to know what the name of your disease is and what drug we should use. But instead, I wanted to think about the underlying causes. And with functional medicine, we have a different map. And the map is focused on the underlying triggers. You saw this in Anna Barker's talk. She talked about the insults that drive cancer. This is exactly the same insults that drive all disease, toxins, uh, microbes, allergens, our nutrition stress, both physical and psychological stresses. And those, in turn, affect our genes. They wash over our DNA and create our phenotype by changing our gene expression. That's what you heard from Danny Hillis today. And those changes in gene expression lead to imbalances in our system. So instead of diseases, where I hang out or is in these systems, that's what I do every day. That's what doctors who practice functional medicine do every day. They look at the imbalances in the basic systems. And this was the map that I used to recover. This was the map of my own illness. I'm at the center, and the, this is patient-centered medicine. I mean, it's not just patient-centered in the psychological sense or the social or cultural sense. It's patient-centered in the molecular sense. And what I realized was that I had certain SNPs, glutathione SNPs, methylation SNPs, that prevented me from detoxifying all the mercury that I breathed in in China. I had stress from working in the ER and disrupting my circadian rhythms. And then one day I went to Maine on a summer vacation with my kids, and I got a parasite from the lake. And suddenly my whole system broke down. I went from riding my bike 100 miles a day to not being able to walk up the stairs. And I realized that at that moment my whole system collapsed. My digestion broke down. My immune system went crazy. I started developing allergies where I never had allergies. I had developed autoimmune antibodies against my own tissue. I was unable to detoxify. My mercury levels were very high. My liver functions were high. I developed hormonal dysregulation, adrenal problems, circadian rhythm disruption. And I also had trouble with my mitochondria, which are the basic units of energy production in our cells. And I couldn't produce energy anymore. And that affected my whole system. In fact, the loss of energy, the ultimate loss of energy is death, right? And, our, my, and, and, and aging is a process of mitochondrial dysfunction. You've heard it here many times at this conference. And I, I developed high muscle enzymes, indicating my muscles were breaking down. I developed problems with my mitochondria that I diagnosed through looking at my oxidative metabolism through Krebs cycle analysis in the urine. So through this map I, and through understanding these nodes in the network of my biology, I was able to put together a different story about how I got sick and how to get well. And it wasn't by trying to name all the diseases I had. It was by understanding the underlying causes in these nodes, the hormonal dysfunction, the immune dysfunction, the neurotransmitter dysfunctions that happen, changes in my detoxification system, in my digestive system. And this is what led to the problems. And I used various kinds of diagnostics, like SNP testing. I used a test that looked at my heavy metal burden, which was extraordinarily high. 
I looked at, tests, uh, looked at my gut function and inflammation in my intestinal lining, and we heard about the microbiome at this conference. It's one of the most important things that determinants of health, and it's why so many of us in the West are sick with chronic illness. And I, I saw what was happening in my mitochondria. Now, these aren't diseases. These are just imbalances that I discovered, some of which were the effects and some of them were the causes. For example, mercury is a cause, and it created a whole downstream series of effects. And this is what I do. This is what functional medicine is. This is the map that we all use to think about disease in a different way. So when I got to see all these doctors, I got a whole lot of labels and names and diagnoses, a whole lot of what, but not a whole lot of why. Right? So functional medicine is a way of understanding what's happening. You know, it wasn't just me. I know a lot of you out there suffer from chronic complaints and your family members, and so does everybody in America and the globe. One in two will die from heart disease. Three quarters of us are overweight. One in three people born today will have diabetes. One in five kids today have some type of mood or behavioral disorder. One in 10 of you in this room, or us, I guess I'm included, will have dementia by the time we're 65. So look around. Last week, I went to lunch with General Jack Keane, extraordinary man. He told me something shocking. He said that 70% of the military uh, recruits who are, uh, apply for the military are not fit to serve in the military and are turned away. In 1946, Harry Truman implemented the school lunch program. And the school lunch program was designed to help uh, improve the fitness because people were too thin and, and couldn't go to the military. Our kids were too thin to serve. Now our kids are too fat to serve. And we need a disruptive technology that disintermediates our current healthcare system and provides a model that preserves the best of what we have while changing the way we diagnose and treat disease. It helps the preservation of our current healthcare system that's the best of it, but also helps reduce costs and improve outcomes. And we, we analyzed through the Cleveland Clinic that we could save $930 billion a year by doing this. We uh, understood that this was critical because globally by 2020, there's gonna be 50 million people dying from chronic disease versus 20 million from infectious disease. This is what Craig Venter told us. And these are from preventable lifestyle and other environmental related diseases. We, we lose $2 trillion a year in productivity from loss of healthcare costs. So let me tell you a story about how this can go differently, how we can have a solution for this. This is Clayton. This is every kid in America. He came to see me, he had 11 diagnoses, he had five specialists who saw him, and he took eight medications. He had asthma, allergies, ADD, anxiety, and anal spasms, and that's just the A's. <laughs> he had a whole list of problems, he took a whole list of medications. That's why I call myself a holistic doctor, because I take care of people with a whole list of problems. <laughs> <laughs> and many of you also have a whole list of problems, and you take medications. In fact, 81% of Americans take at least one medication a day. And it's not the solution. And there's no such thing as comorbidities. All the things that we see as separate diseases are actually connected by the same underlying mechanisms. And we have to look for those patterns in the data, as Jay was talking about. This is Clayton's map, and it's similar to my map. He had immune dysfunction, he had mitochondrial dis issues, he had issues with his gut, he had issues with nutritional status, he ate a junk food diet, he took tons of antibiotics when he was younger, and this created disturbances in his system. And in the nodes of his system, we discovered the cure for his illness. Now, we couldn't just treat one thing, we had to treat everything, because everything's connected. Right, the body's connected. And we, we, we often think that uh, you know, if we, we do one thing, we can fix things. But we have something called the tack rules in functional medicine. If you're standing on a tack, it takes a lot of aspirin to make it feel better. And if you're standing on two tacks, taking one out won't make you 50% better. So you have to deal with everything. And so what did we do? We gave him an anti-inflammatory diet. We cleaned up uh, gluten from his diet, which he had antibodies against. We cleaned up food allergens. We got rid of the bad microbes in his gut with adding probiotics and using medication that were antifungals. We detoxified him from lead. We optimized his nutritional status. And you know, he came back two months later and he was symptom free. He was off his medications and he was doing great in school. But what struck me wasn't the fact that his headaches and stomach aches and his ADD and his asthma and his allergies all went away. It was this. It was his handwriting. This was his handwriting before I saw him. This was his handwriting two months later. So what happened here? 
What's the underlying biology? What's the mechanism? How did his brain go from dysfunctional to functional, from incoherent to coherent? What's going on here? These are the questions that we actually need to be asking. And using the map of functional medicine, the model, the method, it's scalable and teachable and doable. We can actually make a huge difference. This is ma not magic. It's a method. And functional medicine is essentially a new way of thinking about disease. It's not all the ologies. It's a network. It looks for patterns and connections. And it requires a system of application. And that system is functional medicine. So one disease can be caused by many things like uh, Alzheimer's or one factor like gluten can cause many diseases. So this concept of disease is actually obsolete. We have something called categorical misclassification and etiologic imprecision. We put diseases in categories based on symptoms, not causes. We need to change that because we have 12,000 diseases and this is the wrong code book. We need to think about what's causing things. So let me just give you one last example and then I'll wrap up. And I see Richard standing here. <laughs> uh, imagine you go to the doctor, you say, I have depression. I mean, I have a, I'm sad, I'm hopeless, I'm helpless, I have no interest in sex, uh, I, I'm not interested in food, and I, I don't want to do anything anymore. And the doctor goes, I know what's wrong with you. You have depression. But that's just the name we give to people who share those collection of symptoms. That's not the cause of those symptoms. This is a major different way of thinking. So what could be the cause? It could be gluten, which is causing an autoimmune disease that creates a thyroid dysfunction. Or it could be that you have been taking an acid blocker that prevents B12 absorption, you have B12 deficiency. Or it could be vitamin D deficiency because you live in Seattle. Or it could be an antibiotic use that you've used for years for acne that actually causes inflammation in your gut and causes systemic inflammation in the brain. It could be eating too much sushi because you like fish and you have mercury poisoning. Or it could be because you hate fish and you have an omega-3 fat deficiency, or it could be because you love sugar, and that causes insulin resistance, which drives depression. This is the future of medicine. This is personalized medicine. This is the medicine that connects the dots. And when I went to Haiti with my wife right after the earthquake, I realized that, that I connected to a different kind of medicine that actually woke me up to what's going on. We got there. There were 1,500 patients strewn about the, the campus of the hospital. There were. Nobody there had had any food or water or medical care for three days. So we did what we had to do. We set up an operating room. We got to work. And my wife is an orthopedic surgeon, and she went to work using a hacksaw, because that's all we had, to amputate limbs. We used flashlights, headlamps that I brought from our sporting store to light the fields. And we used vodka to sterilize the instruments. But we know there's a better way to treat trauma. And what I'm going to suggest to you today is that our current approach to chronic disease is like using hacksaws to treat trauma. And there's a different story. It's being told across the world. It's not just my story or Clayton's story. It's being practiced in over 40 countries. There's over 31 medical schools and institutions who are exploring functional medicine. There's over 13 residencies that are interested in working in this area. And this is 21st century. So you can take the blue pills, the red pills, the green pills, and go to specialist after specialist when you get sick. Or you can step into 21st century medicine and work to find the causes of disease and the mechanisms and look at the patterns that connect everything together. Come help me do this. Come talk to me. Because functional medicine is a disruptive technology that's going to overthrow the tyranny of the diagnosis. I know we can do this together. You're innovators. Come find me. Talk to me. Let's figure out how to do this together. Thank you. <laughs>